Welcome to Tech Market Spotlights, presented by World Financial Symposiums, where we discuss the latest growth and exit opportunities for tech companies in emerging trends, specific sectors, and regions throughout the world. The WFS is dedicated to educating technology leaders on the current landscape of tech and finance, helping them build successful strategies for growth and exit. We bring together CEOs, founders, investors, strategic and financial buyers, and M&A experts through our digital media series, our webcasts, podcasts, and online videos, and our live symposiums in tech cities around the world to facilitate idea sharing, global networking, and deal flow. The WFS flagship conference, Growth and Exit Strategies for Software and IT Companies, is a half-day event held in New York, London, Silicon Valley, Singapore, Atlanta, Chicago, Toronto, and major tech and financial centers around the world. Visit WFS.com to learn more and stay connected. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Elon Gasper, and I'll be your host for today's Tech Market Spotlight on gaming with a specific focus on eSports. As a technology entrepreneur and software developer, I built and sold my own startup to Sierra Online, the top computer games company in the world at the time, served as chief technologist, and designed many products too, winning a traditional game of the year, a Comdex Envision, and a Kodi, the retail software Oscar. Today, I'm EVP of Technology and Research at the Quorum Group. My team's research and Quorum's dealmakers guide tech founders through growth and eventual exit, including by supporting WFS and others in events like this one. Today, we'll start with an overview of the esports landscape, take a look at related M&A activity in the market, and then turn to our esports panel with industry luminaries Chris Park, CEO of GenG, and Dan Fiden, president of Cloud9. So let's dive in. Since eclipsing the film and music industries in 2008, gaming has continued to grow. Now it over doubled their revenue, an astounding $150 billion or more. Competitive gaming, eSports, has been developing in step with the rise of the gaming industry and is now positioned prominently as a next logical step in the evolution of video games. eSports are played on all types of platforms, including PCs, consoles, and mobile devices. And as technologies like mobile AR and VR mature, we're likely to see these platforms become more popular as a vehicle for competition as well. Players compete across all types of gaming genres, from first-person shooters uh, to multiplayer online battle arenas, uh, strategy games, my favorite, fighting games, and more. If enough people enjoy a multiplayer game, there are few reasons it can't progress to being a popular esports title, too. You may have heard in the news a few months back about the Fortnite World Cup, where a 16-year-old named Kyle Buga Giersdorf won $3 million. That's a million more than the winner of golf's British Open picked up last year. In fact, if you look at prize pools for individual competitive sports in 2019, the esports competition called the International boasted a larger prize pool than any other sporting event except the U.S. Open for tennis. You may also notice the Fortnite World Cup didn't top the list. But it does occupy spots three and four above the Indy 500. Viewership for esports is, of course, growing rapidly with a compound annual growth rate, CAGR, of about 15%. By 2022, the total esports audience should be over half a billion. In the U.S., probably only the NFL will be bigger by that point. There is an incredible ecosystem and economy around esports with individual players, teams, video game developers, video game broadcasting platforms like ESPN and Twitch, event organizers, sponsors like Intel and Red Bull, and, of course, these huge professional esports competitions such as the International. We're already starting to see the rise of large esports companies that own multiple teams, scout worldwide for the best talent, and are currently building major training facilities complete with physical therapists, sports psychologists, and more. With that, there are lots of opportunities to generate revenue. Sponsorships, media rights, advertising, merchandise, tickets, game publisher fees. 
and we really are just getting started in the U.S. We're likely not even on first base. One interesting number is the total esports revenue of $1.1 billion in 2019. It's definitely on the radar with other major sports. It's seemingly still small compared to the likes of the NFL. But don't be fooled. Our analysts believe that esports revenue remains significantly underreported as the appropriate analytics to pinpoint better estimates are lagging. To hazard a more informed speculation, esports may already be bigger than the NHL. When you look at total esports revenue growth over the past few years, you'll see why. Esports is growing even faster in revenue than in audience and projected to reach total revenue of about $1.8 billion by 2022, with North America generating over $400 million of that. But again, we expect revenue will be higher than this due to the underreporting I mentioned earlier. The CAGR compound annual growth rate has remained very high since 2017, and compared to the other sports leagues, esports growth is seriously outpacing all the others. There is a significant amount of M&A potential in this space, certainly with the consolidation of teams, studios and platforms, building of arenas, uh, etc. But more specifically for technology, we think there is an open door for analytics companies to come in and help monetize this opportunity by contributing to better understanding of financials, audience attendance, user engagement, and retention. With all the other players in this ecosystem, there are many more opportunities for further consolidation. So, to our listeners who may be investors, buyers, and sellers, Keep an eye on this space and take it very seriously. Gaming is a huge industry, with esports among the fastest growing sectors in it. With that, let's take a deeper dive into recent esports related activity with the Quorum Research Team's Matt Haberlack. Matt? Thanks, Elon. Let's dig into MA activity, geography, and specific deals. Global MA activity in esports is just getting started. But with steady growth since 2015 and the potential for significant acceleration as the sector matures. Looking at the MA activity by country, the US has the largest share of esports deals in the past five years, followed by Canada. Outside the US and Canada, the UK and Switzerland also reported notable MA activity. Since 2015, the top esports acquirer has been Torque Esports, a Toronto based public company who engages in esports data provision, tournament hosting, and esports racing. Following Torque is Twitch. Modern Times Group, Game Digital, and Corsair Components, all with three or more acquisitions. Looking to other notable acquisitions in the esports market, most deals have so far tended to fall into hardware and websites. SteelSeries, a manufacturer of integrated hardware and software gaming systems for competitive and casual gamers, was acquired by private equity firm Excel in July 2019. Super League Gaming, an esports community and content platform, acquired Framerate, a developer of social video network focused on esports and gaming in June 2019. In the same month, Rekt Global acquired Greenlit Content, an operator of video game and esports-centric websites to penetrate the esports market and increase its reach to enthusiastic gamers and esports fans. Epic Games, developer of Unreal Engine, which powers video game Fortnite, acquired Psyonix, the developer of the soccer and driving hybrid game Rocket League. Great work. Thanks, Matt, and thanks to the rest of the Quorum Research team for putting this together. Now, let's turn to our panel of industry luminaries to dig a bit deeper into the market opportunity for esports. We have as our guests today Chris Park, CEO of Gen G, and Dan Feiden, President of Cloud9. Gentlemen, welcome. Great to have you on today. Chris, I'd like to turn to you first. Tell us about Gen G. Gen G is a global esports organization. We own and operate teams and franchises in the top esports leagues in the United States, South Korea, and China. Our mission is to connect passionate gamers in the East and West and help young fans and athletes get ahead in their lives through gaming and esports. Dan, what about Cloud9? Cloud9 is an esports team ownership organization. We own and operate 14 different esports teams, and each of those teams competes in a different professional video game, league, or esport. 
We provide coaching, performance psychology, nutrition, physical therapy, all of the support services that you'd expect a professional athlete to receive. And then we also have an internal marketing team that includes both social media, performance marketing, and a full service media production agency that creates content across Twitch, YouTube, and a number of other platforms for our fans. Excellent. Again, great to have both of you here. Let's talk about customers. What are people demanding today in the esports space, and how do you see those demands and expectations evolving over time? Gaming in general is probably the fastest growing and most transformative form of entertainment in the world. Esports is certainly the fastest growing sport in the world at scale. I think we're in the very early stages of the maturation of esports, which will track similarly to prior generations of traditional sports, but with certain key accelerators and amplifiers. The most exciting part about the future of esports is that this is a form of entertainment that isn't bounded by analog restrictions in any way. This is the first sport in human history that is going to scale fully integrated through the rest of media, technology, and entertainment around the world, making it the best place to track the future of those industries. Dan, what are your thoughts? Cloud9's customers are first and foremost our fans. Like traditional sports fans, they're hungry for higher quality live experiences, that means better venues with great fan experiences, and interesting high quality broadcasts of their favorite games. Better on-air talent, more interesting ways to watch the game and experience it as a fan. But one thing that's really unique about esports fans is that they have a very direct, consistent, and intimate connection with their favorite players. Our players don't only interact with their fans during the course of a pro-level game. After a day of practice, they'll log onto a platform like Twitch or Mixer and interact directly with their fans. It's almost like hosting their own AM sports talk radio show every night. It's a level of interaction that's really, really fundamental to Cloud9, our fans, and how our fans experience their favorite players on Cloud9. And I think it's also something fundamentally important to esports. As leagues get more popular, there's going to be a consistent expectation among fans that they're able to maintain that level of intimacy with their favorite players. So evolving ways to do that effectively, scalably, and that work best for a maturing media business is going to be really important for any team organization. Interesting. Clearly, we're going to see new technologies and trends emerge to meet these new demands. What do you think those will be? One of the really exciting things about esports is it's the intersection of a few different really unique and rapidly evolving industries. Obviously, the most important one is the core video game development and publishing business. Over time, I think you'll start to see more games that are developed with game spectation as a core tenant. So ways for non-player spectators to interact with the core game or core game players, for example. We're also already seeing a lot more thought around how spectators and streamers of games can enable the distribution of the game. So mechanisms, for example, that allow streamers to directly distribute games and then generate affiliate revenue for themselves. The second of the industries that I think esports sits at the intersection of is the traditional media business. Obviously, there's been lots of innovation happening in media overall, and I think video game streaming is a very interesting example of businesses that are built with kind of live digital spectation in mind. We're at the beginning of what I think of as the second era of video game streaming platforms. Twitch is clearly the market leader, but really interesting large companies like Microsoft, Google, Tencent, Facebook, and others are competing much more aggressively, not only for the streaming audience, but the content creators. And I think what that's going to lead to very quickly is lots of innovation around the actual capacity, the core product of those streaming platforms. So you'll see much more interesting functionality built into those platforms. And finally, I think esports is obviously an interesting example of the innovation that's happening in the sports world broadly. Over the last few years, there's been lots and lots of attention paid to data capture and data analysis to improve athlete performance. And I think you're going to see really the cutting edge of that world happening in esports. In many ways, the data capture problem is a solved problem for esports. 
every game of every player that's ever played League of Legends and has every performance data point captured already. And so really what you're going to see there is interesting companies and technologies evolve that learn how to take that very large amount of data and apply it in a very practical real world way. Chris? I think the headline that everyone is thinking about right now is mobile. I think as you see esports grow toward the fully addressable internet connected population around the world, you will see mobile as a dominant esports platform. Mobile esports is already gaining traction in certain emerging regions like Southeast Asia. Beyond that, this is really the first sport that is going to come of age at a time when the supply of great entertainment content is practically unlimited. So you will see in esports many of the trends that are top of mind in the movie industry, the music industry, and other entertainment verticals, except that those trends are defining esports in its relative infancy. I think very quickly you're going to see esports outgrow the label of being a quote-unquote sport at all and instead become a broader cross-cutting influence on entertainment. Okay, so... What about M&A activity in eSports now and down the line? Who's buying, who's selling, and why? That's obviously one of the exciting parts of the space. I think there's a lot of different vectors. First is consolidation. The most effective operators are identifying the best ways to fully leverage their communities and resources in new partnership opportunities. You'll see a reduction in the number of competitors in certain segments of the community. Over time, this will give birth to organizations that are probably better equipped to serve the needs of fans and corporate partners. Secondly, you're going to see growing interest from organizations in other verticals of entertainment or even entirely separate industries who see really valuable ways to integrate with esports. If you rewind back to 2016, a core part of our thesis at Cloud9 was that the move toward what are being called franchise leagues within esports would be a very, very important transition in the team side of the ecosystem. We thought that franchising would ultimately lead to the consolidation of the team ecosystem as a result of a few things happening. First, a smaller group of teams that had the exclusive ability to participate in certain games and have that right in perpetuity obviously results in a reduction of the amount of sponsor inventory available. And so brand partners who want to reach esports fans in those games would have to move through the teams that own the franchises. Second, the franchise leagues also were predicated on the notion that revenue streams that had not previously been available to teams would become available to the franchise owners. So through both of those mechanisms, revenue would aggregate with a smaller number of teams who happened to be the teams that also had access to the capital required to enter into these franchise leagues. That obviously leads to consolidation. And since 2016 and the shift to the franchise leagues, I think you're seeing that thesis largely play out. The largest multiple franchise owning esports organizations are taking a larger and larger share of the overall team ecosystem. And the mid sized team organizations that either happen to own a slot in one league that's attractive to a larger organization or have a brand that has some residence and some reach within the ecosystem are being acquired. So consolidation is happening within the team part of the ecosystem. But outside of the team part of the ecosystem, I think the general trend is for the consolidating forces to really come from one of two places. One, the team organizations, and two, the publishers. A bit more broadly, where are we going? What do you think the future holds for esports? So many of the macro metrics of esports are bright and sustainably so, which is especially encouraging because we're still in the early stages. Below the macro level, I think you're going to see a reimagining of some archetypes from the traditional sports and entertainment worlds. Everything from how athletes perform to the relationships that fans have with their favorite teams that will be uniquely well suited to future audiences. 10, 20 years from now, when we look at the landscape of the top esports leagues around the world, you're going to see those leagues looking a lot more multidisciplinary than what you see today. I think the top esports organizations are going to be drawing the best practices from not just sports, but also music and other important subcultures of entertainment. 
the future of esports is really talking about the future of a number of very different industries that all kind of intersect within esports. One is the future of the video game industry, and I think it will continue to evolve into an industry where distribution is really driven by curators and content creators, and those include team organizations within esports. The second is the evolution of the media business. And I think what you're seeing is new forms of media and new forms of deeply live, deeply interactive media like what you see in streaming. And then finally, the third place that really the future is being written in esports is in the traditional sports industry. For esports team organizations specifically like Cloud9, I think you're already seeing an interesting evolution happening. The biggest brands like Cloud9 remain very, very focused on ensuring that their core product, their competitive team businesses, continue to perform, resonate, and have great content that allows people to interact with the brand in a meaningful way. But increasingly, you're seeing companies invest in businesses that really leverage that brand reach as a marketing channel for a different kind of direct-to-consumer revenue. There are organizations like FaZe Clan and 100 Thieves that really seem to be focused on using their competitive brand reach to build a lifestyle clothing brand business, for example. Other organizations like TSM are focused on building a web media properties business. At Cloud9, we're very interested in and investing heavily into a youth esports business that we think is going to be a tremendous direct-to-consumer revenue stream in the future, and that we think is fundamentally aspirational because of the fact that Cloud9's professional-level teams are the favorite teams of people who love professional video games and esports generally. Excellent. Many of our listeners are CEOs, founders, and investors in software and uh, related tech companies, in this case in and around esports. What advice do you have for the CEOs listening who may be considering selling their esports related company? I think the most important parameter for any CEO in an industry like this is to be really aware of both the pace of change and where all that change is likely to go. There's still a pretty significant knowledge and experience gap between even the most progressive decision makers from traditional institutions on one hand and esports insiders on the other. And I think that gap can be either a liability or an opportunity. I would also caution that we are still so early in the development of this sport and vertical. So think very carefully about what real value would be handed over at this point if one were to write the final chapter on an esports investment today. What about the buy side? What should acquirers look for in esports related companies they're looking to sell? What's a, what's a good get, if you will? I think when you're an investor in any business, you need to really focus first on the fundamentals. Is there interesting revenue growth in this business? Is it being run responsibly? Is the management credible? I think these are foundationally important ideas. I think you also want to look for things like technological defensibility or a real brand relationship that's durable with the end consumer of the business. But if you're investing in a high growth sector like esports, you need to fundamentally believe in the outsized growth opportunity. And that's visible in a couple of different spaces. First, about the video game industry. It's gone through a massive transformation from physical distribution of content to digital distribution of content. Do you believe that that disruption, that change in the core business model of the video game industry is complete? And second, do you believe that the growth of the industry is complete? Or is there a lot more headroom to go? The video game industry worldwide is taking an increasing share of the entertainment dollar and time spent. Do you think that that growth is over? What esports represents, both on the media side and on the sports side of things, is a fundamentally different mode of interaction, fundamentally different way of monetizing their fan base um, that I think is relevant, not just because these pro players happen to be playing video games, but because these businesses have figured out something about how to interact with and monetize millennials and younger that is going to need to be figured out by much larger, much more traditional sports and media businesses. For esports in particular, I think the critical part is what I talked about before. The idea that investment decisions right now are happening at an inflection point in esports history where its reach and cultural relevance is starting to diversify in meaningful ways. 
Gen G has been fortunate to have partnered with several great investors, a range of great venture firms and technology leaders who are particularly interested in bridging the US and Asia. They were all very familiar with the landscape, but had been waiting to find a bespoke opportunity that fit their particular investment theses and passions. I think any investment decision in esports today has to look several layers below the surface of that term to identify great opportunities that really differentiate themselves. Many companies around the world are already building very distinctive communities or lines of business where they are leveraging esports and the power of gaming, but the core business is much more than winning championships. So I think it's imperative, certainly on the investor side, to critically examine opportunities and drill down to that level to understand an organization's unique value. Great insights. Very interesting. Dan, Chris, thanks again for joining us today. We have covered a lot of ground today. I'd like to leave you with some key takeaways. Like video gaming in the 80s, esports is poised for substantial growth today. Next, esports is moving rapidly for westward from Asia, and it's rapidly catching up to the traditional U.S. sports leagues in terms of prize pools, viewership, and total revenue. Total revenue, estimated at nearly $2 billion in 2022, seems significantly underestimated. And finally, there are huge opportunities for M&A, team investment, infrastructure, analytics, marketing, and everything else involved in running comprehensive esports events online and in person. And that's it for today's broadcast. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed today's Tech Market Spotlight. If you have any questions not answered, please submit them to info at WFS.com. We look forward to seeing you at one of our live events at a city near you. To register for one of our events, view upcoming webcast topics, or hear rebroadcasts of this and other Tech Market Spotlight events, please go to WFS.com. And if you are an industry luminary interested in being a guest speaker, please email director at WFS.com. Thank you for attending today's webcast.